Welcome to section 2, Widgets and Masters Wireframing Basics. By the end of this section, you will be able to create simple static wireframes. We'll be using some of the native wireframe widgets and we'll also be editing the properties and formatting of these widgets. We'll turn our widgets into masters where appropriate in order to encourage reuse and reduce duplication. Duplication is your enemy and not only can it lead to substantial rework when making updates to our wireframes, it can also have repercussions at build time where developers are following your lead. In the first part of this section we will set up some page properties and page styles and create some guides for your wireframe. First up page notes. Uh, this is where you can add reference notes about your page. This can be a handy exercise for clarifying the scope of the page in the project both for yourself and others and you can make uh, specific references to requirements documents. Page styles is useful to set up at this point. The dialog allows you to set up some basic page settings such as background color uh, and you can set a background image uh, and how it repeats and so on but it's a good idea uh, to actually set these uh, to the default page style so that it's applied to all of your pages not just this one uh, remember about duplication check page one you see it's a uh, black as well uh, it's a good idea to set a font here as well uh, so that you don't have to worry about this aspect unless you wish to deviate from it let's just set the background color back to white version 7 also includes web fonts so you can reference fonts located on the web by using a URL you can also tweak the sketchiness settings here, which gives a hand-drawn effect that helps to show clients that your early work is well sketchy. This is an important facet of UX design, focusing on the user, fo focusing the user on aspects of the interaction and content. On to the page canvas now. First, you will most likely want to work with preset dimensions, so we're going to create some guides which objects will snap to. There is a 960 grid guide preset as we saw earlier, but for now we're just going to drag out some global guides by holding control, click, drag, and I think that's command on a uh, Mac. You'll see the global guide is pink. If you drag without control, you get a turquoise color. If you go to another page, you'll see uh, that our uh, global guide is there. Uh, you can delete unwanted guides by clicking them and they go green and, and press delete. So we've got a global guide at 10 pixels. Let's add another one at 610. giving us a 600 pixel wide column another at 630 and another at 950 gives us a 320 pixel right column these are fairly arbitrary values uh, just to get us going. Now you can lock your guides. Uh, this is useful because it's easy to accidentally drag your guides out of place when the canvas gets busy. 